So good morning, everyone, and thank you for, for joining us this morning as we have a wee look at um, a plus it in a bit more detail, so a finance system for, for non-profits made simple. Um, my name is Tom McIntyre, so Account Manager at Eureka Solutions. Been here over five years now and, and do, have been doing a lot with iPlicit since we, we became a partner. Okay. So just uh, an overview agenda of what we'll look at this morning. We'll do some introductions um, to both Eureka Solutions um, and iPlicit. So with ourselves being one of iPlicit's partners, um, we'll have a look at um, the background of, of our implementation experience and a bit more about iPlicit um, from a high level, just to give you an idea of, of the software. We'll then look at a bit of how iPlicit makes finance simple for non-profit organisations and some of the key features um, of the software that's that's going to hopefully make your life a bit easier going forward compared to maybe some of the starter solutions out there that, that may be being used by someone to call. I do recognise some of the names, so welcome to those who I've spoken to before. Then we'll go into a kind of brief software demonstration, looking at some of the some of the areas that we're going to pinpoint in the slides, um, which should hopefully then bring everything to life a bit more um, as we look at the software in a bit more detail. We then have time for a QA. and a so there is um, the, the chat facility and the question facility of Zoom. Um, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to pop them into the chat facility. My colleague Nathan, who is on that with us this morning, will pick those up and we'll make sure we get those um, questions answered at the end. Anything that I don't have the answer to straight away, I will certainly go and get the answers for you. So please do feel free to ask questions and we will get those covered at the end. And then we'll find, f finish with some closing remarks at the end. Booked in until 11 o'clock this morning. Hopefully, probably won't take um, your full hour responding. So thank you for joining again, and we'll make a little start. So as I said, we'll do some introductions to begin with, and we'll, we'll start with a bit about Eureka Solutions um, and, and our experience of, 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 of implementing um, cloud systems. So we've been implementing cloud business systems for... Well over 15 years now, um, and we've been founded on two key core principles that remain with the business right up to today. And those two are technical expertise and customer service. So making sure that we're, we're technically proficient in all the solutions that we provide, whether that be iPlicit, um, also a partner for Sage and Oracle NetSuite, and our added functionality of the likes of Besyncly and some of our add-on products that we've got as well. So everyone here at Eureka Solutions well versed um, in all the solutions that we that we provide, and it's something that we take great pride in that we do have that expertise in all our products. And customer service is a second pillar of everything we do here at Eureka. Um, so that's from right through from pre-sale and things like today, um, like webinars, through to our implementation services, through to our technical support team, and then through to after sales as well and making sure that everyone's well looked after by our account management team. So through the whole duration at Eureka, um, customer service and that technical expertise is what underpins everything that we do. So we provide the implementation, and we also do development and support services for our own integration uh, integration application, basically. And we'll come on to that as we go through the webinar today, because that might be relevant for so many people um, and organisations joining us this morning for integration to, um, for example, fundraising systems. So we'll come on to that. So we would do the implementation and support of iPlicit as well. So taking you through from the scoping stage, looking at making sure we fully understand your requirements going forward. We would also do the implementation of the system through our um, skilled implementation team, headed up by Mike, who would who would look after the whole implementation of iPlicit right through from, as I say, scoping, to data, um, data migration into iPlicit, um, making sure it's configured correctly as per your requirements and doing all the training and go live as well. We would also then take the support for the system as well. So we'll come on to our support in a little second, where we would look after any day-to-day -day queries um, with the system, anything that may touch would not be working, getting that back up and running and just making sure you're well looked after after you go live with a listen. So we've actually grown dramatically um, over the years. Um, so we had three staff back in 2004 um, looking after all areas of the business to well over 70 today. And that actually might be creeping towards the 80 mark um, with the majority in technical roles. So a good example of that is probably myself being here for over five years now um, and worked on our support team, worked as part of our implementation team as well before moving across to 
to be to speaking to you guys today about about um, the, the solutions that we offer. Um, so everyone's got that kind of technical background to be able to answer any kind of technical queries. And that all comes back to those two key core principles that we work from, which is technical expertise and, and customer service. It's, it's a big part of, of making sure those two principles are, are underpinned. So uh, looking at the kind of second of those, um, the customer service side, we, we do run a on customer sure, and we have a, a rating of 9.7 out of 10, which uh, we're, we're proud of, and we always want to make sure we're striving to improve that even further. Um, so what does that actually mean in practice, the, this 9.7 out of 10 score? So it's basically our support team who, as I say, will, will pick up day-to-day -day queries, day-to-day -day inquiries from, from customers using, using solutions like I plus it. Um, are then asked to fill in an anonymous kind of feedback form or that can we can we, the customers can state their, state where they're from as well. And that gets that gets automatically uploaded to um, the link below. Um, so where we publish our customer reviews um on our website. So please feel free to go and have a look at those. As I say, sitting at nine point seven out of ten, which we're of course really proud of, but always striving to to be better in that area as well. Um, so it's it's something that we're we're continually working on, and again underpins that that second core value, um, which is supported by the first, um, having technical expertise and customer service. So that was a bit of background on Eureka Solutions, as I say, a proud partner for iPlicit. So. That's now looking at the, the software that, that we that we that we can provide and implement. So what is iPlicit and what can what is the what underpins iPlicit? So it's cutting edge true cloud accounting software. So when we say true cloud, it's not hosted, it's not um running on a server, it's hosted elsewhere. It is fully a true cloud solution, meaning that we can run this in um, any kind of browser, Google Chrome, probably most popular, I would say, out there, um, but we can run this on it on any browser and get into our data at any time. And it's actually built off the back of, of 30 plus years of industry experience. So I don't know if there are any people on the call today that's, that's maybe even used or definitely heard of Exchequer, which is a popular accounting system um, in, in, in years gone by. And the founders of, of Exchequer and the makers of Exchequer have now pivoted to, to build iPlicit. Now, this has been in the often for a number of years and we've worked on for a number of years and now those ideas and those and all that hard work has now came into what we're going to look at today and, and a full cloud accounting system I plus it. So it's actually designed um, for businesses and, and finance professionals that are maybe limited by on-premise or, or starter cloud solutions. Um, so it's it's been basically guys that had created the software that had seen a, a real gap um, when it came to the, the options available for, for, um, for businesses um, when it comes to um, cloud accounting software. So what, what was that gap? So the gap was that people wanted to get into the cloud and, and maybe get away from some of the starter cloud, um, cloud solutions or even starter on-premise solutions that are out there. So a good example was being maybe Sage 50, Zero. QuickBooks, which are all great solutions in their own right, but at points that you start to start to outgrow them. Um, and there are options out there. We obviously we are a part of our net suite, and there's there's other um, full cloud ERP solutions out there, but probably quite big in terms of the the implementation estimates and and the time taken to configure these systems. So iPlicit is designed to give you that enterprise level functionality but a quicker adoption and implementation process, and thus probably at a, 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 um, a reduced price as well. So there's over 700 organisations using the software, and that's and that's equates to over 19, or probably over 20,000 now daily users of the software um, across those those 700 to 800 now plus organisations using it plus it. And it's not just, you don't need to take my word for, for iPlicit, it has won plenty of awards and very, very recent rewards. Um, and I'm just going to put some of them on the screen just now, just to show the credibility of iPlicit over the last um, couple of years, now starting to get recognised by um, bodies um, in the space. Um, as you can see there, we've got very, very recent awards, 2023 back to 2020. Um, and all I like, can ISO certified as well. Um, so very much in safe management when using iPlicit. 
So now we're looking at a wee bit about the functionality and what actually is iPlicit. And of course, we'll go into some of the functionality when we look at the, the software demonstration a bit later on this morning. But it really is an all encapsulating um, software package um, with real, real good functionality and with the main thing being all full true cloud based. So you can see here we've got lots and lots of functionality that we can tap into with iPlicit. So reporting, PL and SL um, processing, and um, we can automate lots of those as well. As we'll see in the um, in the software demonstration this morning, configurable and, and reporting and fully drillable reporting, which is a real key area um, of iPlicit being able to slice and dice and drill into data quickly and easily. And we'll look at that as we go forward. Automation is something that is key in iPlicit, and we'll look at some of those potential automations that we can do within the system. Access from, from really anywhere. So iPlicit has got its own app, and we'll touch on where that could maybe be used as we look at the, the demonstration this morning. Projects modules, fixed asset management, and also the likes of partial VAT, which we'll touch on in a wee second. So there's lots and lots of avenues that we can go down with iPlicit and ways that we can configure the system to tailor lots of different needs. Of course, we'll be looking at it more from a, from a non-profit organisation this morning, but there's certainly scope to do lots and lots with the system. And you've got that flexibility of choice to, to see exactly what you want to use um, within the system. This is just giving a good flavour for what is available. And this will come to life as we go forward in, in the session this morning. So looking at more from the non-profit organisation, which of course is what we're really here for today and, and looking at that in a bit more. Now, of course, there is um, crossover for some, some, some of the advantages of iPlicit for any business using the system. But there are some key areas within iPlicit that gives not-for-profits a real a real edge um, and allows them to probably be more efficient in areas that may be slightly harder to, to use and some of the starter solutions that are out there. So maybe some reliance on third-party kind of Excel sheets, or maybe some reliance on third-party software. So iPlicit has actually got some really nice functionality out of the box, which can really help not organisations. So some of them being restricted and unrestricted funds and reporting of those, and we can have a wee look at how we can maybe set some of those up this morning. Partial VAT, which can be a bit of a nightmare in some systems um, for those that aren't really configured to be able to, to do it. Um, so a lot, as maybe from, from people that I've spoken to before, doing a lot of that outside the system in Excel. I plus it will give us the, the opportunity to do that within the system. Um, get, so we'll have a wee look at how we can, we can configure that. And there's also the potential to integrate to third party systems as well. So I mentioned before, um, Besyncly, which you can see in the bottom right corner of your screen, that is a third part, um, an integration tool that ourselves at Eureka have developed, um, over a number of years, really, that is, is, that has been designed to allow you to, to integrate to third party systems. So allowing you iPlicit to integrate to third party systems. So it could be fundraising systems, it could be third party CRM systems, it could be um could be any GoFundMe is, is a good example. It could be any kind of third party system that you want to integrate to. And because iPlicit has an open API and we've got the expertise of integrating solutions together, it gives it gives you that option going forward. So you're never in a in a position where you're going to have kind of disparate systems and not speaking to each other. You've always got that option um, to be able to you know, to be able to integrate. So just put, going to put in some, I've got some logos here of some um, organisations and some charities who are already using iPlicit. Now, as at Eureka Solutions, I've got a good heritage of working with lots of charities as well through, through our many systems, but iPlicit in particular work with lots and lots of charities. And these are just some of the charities and, and not-for-profit organisations that mm -hmm. iPlicit has been successfully implemented um, for. So some of the functionality that we'll look at this morning being used in practice at some of these uh, at some of these organizations and of course if you need any further information on iplus its customer base and, and some of the kind of success stories and case studies that we've got available please do not hesitate to to reach out to myself 
And I can certainly facilitate that and we can have a, a, a wider conversation about some of the success stories and some of the um and some of the, the sites that I plus have already been been successful with successful implemented in. So please do reach out. My contact details will be available at the end of the session today. Okay then, so what we'll do now, um, that's the, we're glad to know that all the slides done. So we'll just pop over to looking at that of iPlusit. So as I said before, iPlusit is fully cloud-based solution. So you can see here that I'm about to log in just through any kind of browser. Um, so that, again, just stating it as a full true cloud solution. So not going through any um, remote desktop connections or anything of this sort. As you can see, we're sitting in Google Chrome as our browser this morning, and we're going to log in from there. So if I just use this login button, I've just came to iPlusit.com, probably the easiest place to go to, to log in. So I'm just going to click a login button and it already knows that I've been logged in before and I can simply log in to the system I plus up. So what we can do when we log in as well, we can set up two-factor authentication. So as you can see here, we can set it up from and here in our security, our security settings. So we can set up two-factor authentication to be able to use apps like Authy, for example, and set up um, for a phone, fingerprint recognition and face recognition. So you can certainly make iPlus very, very secure at the login stage. And there's lots of security settings that we can set up. So all hosted in Azure. Um, and if you do need any other information on, on the hosting and the setup by Plus it from a backend perspective and a security perspective, please do reach out and we can send across all of the all the relevant kind of documentation and information on that. So as you can see, we have logged into Plus it, and immediately we are pre we are presented with um, our dashboard. So we can choose exactly what we look to see on opening my Plus it. It may be that you're doing a certain task, or you're wanting to see certain information, or you're part of a certain department, and you want to see something that is that is, um, that is specific to what your job role is. So I've. I'm looking at the, the age creditors dashboard. It could be any dashboard. It could be any inquiry scheme. So you've got real um, power and control over what you see when you open and plus them. So it can be anything you want it to be. We can also look over to our left hand side and we can change the color of iPlus if we wanted to. Again, just to make things a bit more our, our, our own home. So we can do exactly what we want to make iPlus look um, how we want it to be. As I say, we're looking at one of our dashboards just now. And as we go through, this is just one of the ways that we can be presented with information in iPlusit. So there's probably going to be three or four ways that we can get information out of the system with dashboards just being one of those. Right. So what we'll do is there's a lot of ways to get around iPlusit as well. So we'll start off with just looking at some of the, the ways that we can get around the system. Now you can see we've got different um, tabs up the top here. We've got a toolbar down the left, which will become more populated as we go through the demo this morning. And that's going to be really, really handy in terms of having different tabs open at the one time. And we'll come to that um, as we go through the uh, as we go through the section this morning. There's lots of ways that we can search information as well. So if I wanted to find different parts of the system, for example, what our chart of accounts, I can just simply type in the, in the search bar here and quickly, easily find areas of the system that I want to go to. Other ways that we can navigate our way around the system is by using the global search tool as well. So if I wanted to search a specific area, like listen, whether it be a customer, a document, whatever it may be, then I can just certainly search in here. So if I just pop in 527, for example, if I've got the number lock on, we can let that go. And what will happen now is we, it will give us any purchase invoice um, that has got 527 in it. So it could have been any kind of search parameter that you've made, and we can easily get access to anything that we want to look at in the system. So if I just go in and then look at that invoice, I can go straight from there, straight into our purchase invoice. Not have to go really anywhere, you can easily get just from um, the search panel. Other things that we've got up at this um, right hand side, we'll continually probably come back here as we go through this morning. But we've always got help with iPlicit, so we can always go into our help section. And as you can see, that takes us straight into a help guide 
or purchase invoices because that was the screen that we were on when we when we clicked the when we clicked the help icon. So not just taking you to a generic screen where you need to then do some more searching, it will quickly take you to that area by plus that you've been in. And now as I say, our support team will always be there, our implementation team will have trained you to to know exactly where to go and, and how to do different things. But naturally, when we're learning a new system or when we're learning anything, there's going to be probably some questions that are something that you maybe don't not remember. I still get it today, having used iPlicit for, for, a, for a long while now, uh, when I need to just search different you know, different parameters and different areas of the system. There is lots in there. So this is really good just to get quick information, maybe just that reminder that we need to, um, to, to do what we're to do this task that we're going to do. While we're in here, we can actually look at different releases of iPlicit. Uh, so being a full cloud system, you have got the advantage that there is no kind of costly version upgrades. That's something that's kind of synonymous with on-premise systems. So if you were wanting to get access to the latest functionality, there may be a, a cost associated to upgrade your server, upgrade um, your version of the software. The great thing about being fully on the cloud and being with iPlicit is that you're always on the latest version of the software. So as you can see here, there's been quite a lot added over the last months and la um, in the last year. There's been lots that's been added in in terms of automa automations, some, um, just some enhancements of certain areas of the system. And you've always got access to this release area, just so you can see what's been added. And we'll always give you a, um, kind of a heads up if anything is going to be added to the system. Um, but this just gives you a good idea of what's been added and what's going to be coming um, in, the road, in the roadmap for, for iPlicit. So it's going to be a key advantage of, of just moving to the cloud, to be honest, is be always being on that um, latest version. So you're not going to experience any version lock or be restricted in any kind of functionality at any point just because you've not hit the button on an upgrade or maybe not get the resource either financially or resource-wise to do an upgrade of the system. I plus it have always got you covered and make sure you're always on the latest version of the software. So coming back into the program itself and looking at this purchase invoice that we've got, we can now have a look at different things that we can start to do in iPlicit. So just looking at the, um, the, accounts, the accounts payable side, we're looking at this invoice um, for our ad fact this morning, and we can immediately see what's going on with this invoice because we've got this watermark here that says that it has been paid. So we immediately, as we go into that invoice, know that it's all been paid and there's nothing more really to do with this invoice. So a really nice feature just to know exactly what's going on without having to, to scroll through a lot of reports and maybe some inquiry screens to see exactly what's happened. And when we come to the last few in a second, I can probably take that to um, add to that as we go. We've got this attachments button here. Now, this is really, really nice um, addition to iPlicit. Just full document or um, document storage facilities um, for your purchase invoices. This is probably a key area where we would use some of this functionality. As you can see, we can have more than one attachment here if we need to. So I just pop into our purchase invoice that we added. You can get a quick preview of that. It's not there. I would love to get purchase invoice. I'm sure everyone on the call would love a purchase invoice like this that's got nothing on it. Um, but it gives you an example of ways that we can simply add documents to our transactions. So giving us that greater visibility um, of what's coming into the business and what, what the invoice is actually, um, and what, what is actually on that invoice. So we can compare and contrast against what the supplier has actually sent us. So really easy document storage and, um, and document management facilities with an iPlus app. We can take that a step further as well um, in terms of being able we can easily attach the document straight from, say, emails. I would imagine most purchase invoices that those on the webinar this morning are receiving are from email, PDF format, but it could be any format of um, invoice that we, we attach in here. And we can take that to the next level with an AP automation tool that iPlus has. So that is taking that one step further and being able to actually scan those PDFs that you're getting through from your suppliers. So saving the kind of manual intervention of having to manually put up in invoices that we can that we can simply do, or as I say, we could we could upload those through spreadsheets um, and CSV files. But the AP automation tool is going to take that to that next stage where it's actually reading your invoice with OCR software doing automatic matching, any purchase orders it's part of, 
reading who the supplier is and the values, and then popping that into implicit for you to then take forward. So just ways that we can start to um, save time um, and, and drive more efficiency um, with, with an implicit. As you can see here now, we are on our purchase invoice kind of screen, and we can always drill into different areas that we look at there. So we're originally in our purchase invoice, and as I said before, you can see this left-hand side is starting to build up. So in some other systems, you might need to maybe go into a different tab or um, even come out the screen itself. So I don't know if there's any kind of like Sage users, Sage 50 users on the call this morning that you would probably have to come out of the screen that you're on and then pop in to, to see other information. So a good example of that, if I just click, click a shift key, we can easily then get to our supplier record from there. And as you can see, it always retains what we were at before. So we can easily go back. So if we were looking at a purchase invoice and I wanted to quickly have a look at maybe some of the supplier details or um, supplier statement, for example, that could be popped into our attachment section as, as we saw in the purchase invoice, I can easily go and have a look and then just come back to what we were doing before. So as you can see, I've got all these things that I've looked at this morning all kind of building up on this left-hand side and we can easily get back to them. So really easy navigation around the system. Go back into our suppliers can have a real look here. We can easily then slice and dice. Now, what we're seeing here is one of our views. Um, this is for suppliers. It could be for customers. It could be for our chart of accounts. And you can see at the top here, we've got these different views that we've set up. Really easy to slice, as I say, slice and dice our, um, our data in ways that suits us. So you can see here, I've got different views set up for my tech suppliers, for my freelance suppliers. So if I just go into those, you can see it dramatically reduces the um, the number of suppliers that, are, that appear on the screen. And what are the, what is that doing? It's just filtering it out to just the technology group or, for example, just the freelance group. And we've got more here just for some ones that get outstanding balances. And it's really easy to set these up within our view screen. So I can sit really quickly and um, set up a view that's going to suit me. And again, this is across the whole life class. This isn't just for suppliers. And this just gives you a good example of how easy it is to, to start to get around. If I actually go back into our invoices, for example, so if I come back into our purchases, there's loads of ways that we could get to our invoices. So if I just go this way this time, I could have just went back through this way. Lots of different ways to get to where we want to be. You can see down the left-hand side what's actually going on with these invoices, just with a quick colour code. So we can see here, this one's pending authorization. And we'll come on to workflows. There's lots of workflow configuration we can do across purchasing, across budgets, across expenses. So there's different workflows that we can create out of the box with implicit um, to be able to make sure that invoices or expenses or budgets go to, say, a budget holder or a department head or whoever it may be that has to approve that, work, um, to approve that invoice or budget or expense. So we can easily see if anything is pending authorization. Of course, we can filter out um, just to see ones that are pending authorization. You can see ones that have been fully posted. You can see ones that have been kind of fully paid as well, just through this kind of colour code. And also tells us one that there's been maybe an error with that we need to go and make some amendments to before we can actually do anything to it. Okay. So that's just a wee bit about purchase invoice. And what I'll do is just to bring that to life, I think I'd probably pop a new one on just to show you how that would work. And we've got these different document types that we can set up. So I've got lots and lots in here. So if you want, you might have only one or two or three, but you can have as many as you need in here. So you can have different document types for maybe there's some different scenarios that you come across. So if I just pop in, say, and I can just pick a supplier, I'll just go with Advan. And I can pop in the invoice number that we, that we want. So I'll just go one, seven, three. Oh, we have just came out. So all these for one. It's too quick on the screen there. So we come back and our invoice number. And we can just use our tab key. So there might be someone on the call that are used to using the tab key just to pop through information. And then we can start putting on some, any products that we wanted to do. This could be stock. It could be just products that we want to put on as lines. Pop in here, and then we can run a price for the item. So we can say it's going to be £300 up through there. And we can create that as a draft, or we can submit that invoice. So we put that through just now. And you can see that has been submitted through. 
Now you can see already that that is pending authorization because it is going to go through that kind of workflow um, for someone to go and approve. And up the top here, as you can see, you can see that I've actually got some no notifications that are that are sitting there. And what that's doing is saying there is a flag there to say there is something that you need to approve. Now, obviously, in this instance, I am the one who is the requester, also the one that's an approver. Whether that would be something that would happen in reality, I'm not too sure. But for demo purposes, that is that is what's kind of going to happen this morning. And we can, so I've got some some notifications here to say, so Tom, you have got something that you need to um, you need to you need to go and approve. You can see here I've actually now got four unread notifications. And I can quickly say here there's some purchase invoices that I need to go and approve. And um, I've got some expenses there as well that happened yesterday, and that can quickly build up. Now we can set up emails and things so that um, approvers can be can can go and um, and authorize anything they need to. Okay. We'll come back to workflows as we go. We can set up loads of workflows. As I say, it's not that we've done ones here for purchase invoices, but it could be for budgets. It could be for um, expenses, as I said before. So there's lots of different things that we can do, that we can do, and I plus it um, through our through our workflows that we can set up. So it's just a wee bit about purchases, and I feel like the purchasing area gives us a good chance to look at some of those key areas within iPlus and how easy it is to get from A to B, and how easy it is to use some of the search functionality. So if we go pop into our general ledger now, and I can actually start to publish for a bit more about the reporting capabilities that we've got. And this could easily be, be an incoming expenditure report that a lot of people will be using on the call today. We've just got a, P, a simple kind of P&L set up, and this is going to kind of, kind of highlight the, the reporting capabilities that we've got within iPlus. So as I said, right at the beginning, we've probably got three or four ways that we can start to get data out the out the system. So we've already seen our some of our dashboards, and I can probably look at some, some more of those as we go. And now we'll look at that probably the second, and maybe arguably the most powerful area of the reporting, um, and that is, is, is the inquiries that we are seeing here just now. So in some starter systems and maybe some on-premise solutions, might be restricted to just running a static kind of p &L or income expenditure, file balance. Um, so you're, you're maybe limited in what you can do after the fact. But what you've got here is real live drillable reports. So you can see here I've run this p and and I've got it. I can split it by cost center, I could split it by department. And the beauty of iPlus is that on our chart of accounts, there is no end to the amount of analysis that we can do. So it might be you've got a cost center department set up, but it might be you want to add a fund in there. You want to add a project in there, for example. And you can actually set up chart of account rules so that when you are posting to these um, nominal accounts or these general ledger codes, that users must specify some of these um, some of these some of these analysis points that you want to analyze on. So you might want to say it's you must, when you're putting in a transaction, you must specify a project, you must specify a cost center, you must specify a department, for example. And that can be done per user and it can be set up per group of users so that different people from different departments are tagging the um, transactions correctly. And we can set up defaults for different users, meaning that when they're doing a um, transaction, it will automatically default to the department, for example. So the chart of accounts can get really, really intuitive in terms of um, how we can set that up with different chart of account rules. And I can go on and show you the chart of accounts in a wee second just to straighten that a bit further. But with the reporting in, in particular, we can see here we've got this profit and loss, a simple profit and loss by um, by financial year, but we could do that by a legal entity. And um, that's obviously a plus it can look after lots of different legal entities within the one Data, single database, so we can post transactions. Um, we should have highlighted that in the, when we're posting that purchase invoice, that we could have done it to one of many companies that we've got set up within this demo set. And that can be the same for you as well. You can certainly have more than one legal entity within here. And you can see that here from, from the split that we've done on our P&L. We've got um, the Prime's company, we've then got our rentals and subscriptions, we've got our trust, and we've got our trading. So we can split the we can split our reports by that. We could do it by cost center, and we could also maybe do it by department. And we can start to easily change the make and look and feel of these reports really, really easily. Um, so if I wanted to, say, drag the department, department into here and change the layout slightly, just move this up here. 
if I wanted to add in our cost centre, then we can certainly do that. You can see they've all been added in. If we wanted to add any of those attributes that we want to do, so if I wanted to pop in a fund, for example, we could do it by fund. So there's lots and lots of ways that we can slice and dice and do it really quickly and really easily without having to really do any kind of man manual report. Or sort of run a whole load of different reports and then consolidate those into one. You can easily get the information you're looking for quickly just by using these really good, really powerful inquiries. Now, this isn't just for these financial reports, for example, like income expenditure and PL and trial balance. You'll see this across a plus that there's lots and lots of inquiries that we can run. So if I just pop into this analytics tool, you can see here, then we can then pop into our inquiries reports and dashboards. So another good example of that is probably that age creditors. Um, where we looked at the, the dashboard for age creditors, we can also look at age creditors from a inquiry point of view. And this is where we can really start to get into the nitty gritty of that of that report, shall we say. So we can again spot that by suppliers, so spot it by legal entity, supplier groups, classification. You can slice and dice the data in any way you want to. And you've always got the option now. Obviously, as finance professionals and having worked with, with lots um, over, over the years that I've been at Eureka Solutions, Excel is probably never going to leave us um, as much as we want to do, as, as much as we can within the system. You're always going to have the need probably to, to export to Excel and we will love it, Excel and the functionalities it has. And whilst I plus it certainly bridges the gap between Excel and your finance system, you're always going to have the ability to use that as a supporting system. And there's even an Excel add-in, if I pop, quickly pop, uh, pop into um, an Excel sheet, there's an implicit add-in that can give you live, up-to-date information from these inquiries straight into Excel. So that's another band of, of reporting and analysis that we can do. You get dashboards, you've got your inquiries, you've got the Excel add-in. And as well as that, we've also got our reports as well. So if you did want to run this age creditors as a report and send that out to different people as just a PDF file, then of course we can do that as well. You've got that option to, to run, a, run an age creditors. And we have some help for our age creditors. We can see the one just out the box and I can even want to run that as we go, so I can have a real look at our age creditors report. So there is the same sort of information that we've got in three or four different ways. So loads of different ways that we can get to the information that we need. P&L and your income expenditure is probably a really good way to look at it, just to give you that drillability. So what I didn't look at when we were in our p and for just pop out of here just now is that we can easily start to see the values and go into our different normal accounts and maybe making up the values. So I want to see what's making up this number for a revenue type A account. We can then pop in, we can then go in and see it in a company sale. Oh, I want to see this sales invoice. So I immediately just went from our PL, you know, our financial statement, straight down to that sales invoice that's making up some of the some of the figures that are coming through. So really quick and easy without again having to come out the screens and and, and make it a bit more of a really, really efficient ways to get round about the system. And again, we can then go into different attachments that we might have and all the different avenues that we can go from there. So using our control key, we can actually really get anywhere we need from within uh, my classic, whether that be the tax authority, whether that be the legal entity that we're working in, whether that be the customer, we can easily get from A to B, as I say, really, really quick. And as I, as I said before, everything is going to just load up around this um, around this left-hand side, so you can always retrace your steps. And we always have the ability to make our favourites and say, this is what I'm doing every single day, this is, what I'm, this is my job role, then we can, then we can make our things our favourites. And on that note as well, of course, every single user or every group of users will be assigned a role that defines what they see in iPlus. And of course, for demo purposes, I can see quite a lot of the system so it might be for some users you might just want them to have certain areas of the system. All right. So if I just pop into another area that I think is, is quite important, especially for um, not-for-profit um, organisations that I've spoke to in the past, is about budgets and budget holders and being able to re-forecast and put in your budgets into, into a plus 
you can see here, we can set up budgets. We can also do as many forecasts as we need and I plus it. We can uh, import those through um, Excel, as a lot of people would do. Um, and we can easily get them out into Excel as well. And you can re-forecast as many times as you want. So if I just want to look at, say, this group budget, you can see here that some of those were orange again, um, indicating that it's not been authorised. So we can see here, this is pending authorisation. So we can set up different budget holders um, to be able to approve budget forecasts as they go into the system. And you can see here, we can then see the values, all again, fully drillable. And we've actually got this really nice tool to see the actuals and the variance between our budgets and action. So we can easily see that from a click of a button. And again, we can go into what's making up those actual figures. So if I just pop in what's making up this, um, this, this budget figure, you can quickly go down and see. And I can also see the variance as well. Again, you can pop this out into Excel and you'll all, if you wanted to re-forecast, then we can, that, that visibility will always be there of what went before. So it's not as if it's going to, it's going to eliminate what, what's been, what's been done previously. If you did want to re-forecast at some stage. There's always a log in here as well, and across I plus it, there's always a log to see exactly what's happened um, with a certain transaction or a certain area of the system. There's always a log to see what's happened, and that can, there's actually probably another area that can take that to another level. But just so you've always got that audit trail of who's approved or who's submitted or what time it was approved, what day, just in case there are any queries as you go, um, especially with budgets and things, um, can be, that can be quite important. Alrighty, so another area that we touched on before when I mean, we looked at the slides was was tax and this this notion that we can do um, partial VAT, which some systems that I know from experience do kind of struggle with, especially when um, especially when when not a profit organisations are looking are looking for a system. So we can set up different tax groups within our um, with our system, and of course this is something that would be done and, and scoped out with our implementation team at, in the beginning. You can see here we've got different tax plans for different areas of the world in this case. But we've also got this partial tax group. So if I go and have a wee look in here, you can see here that we've got the ability to indicate if this tax group is going to be allowed partial um, or partial VAT. You can see here we can get the question mark to say this is something, um, if you, just to give a bit more information on that. We can also then indicate what, if we just edit this, we can indicate what partial posting method we choose. So that will obviously have an impact on how, how, um, how transactions are then posted to the GL. So we can see we've got this increased net cost and reduced input tax, which is the one that I'll get selected, but you can choose from a, from a variety of different options. So you've certainly got out the box functionality to be able to, to implement partial VAT, which is something that some of our, um, some of our systems do, do something struggle with. And with that as well, we've also got the, the ability for different funds, so different fund types that we can set up. So as you can see, we've got some restricted and unrestricted, we've also got endowment funds. And we've also, as well as fund types, which is the overarching area of funds, we've also got funds that we can set up with a plus it. So we can see here we've got trustee funds, the general ones. So we can set these up in the background um, and all out the box with a plus it rather than doing some of these things in um, Excel, which is probably what you would need to do in systems that don't really support this, this kind of um, level of functionality that really, really helps for, um, for not for profit organisations. And of course, then with these being in the system, you can easily add those to your inquiries and your reports so if you wanted to run an income um, expenditure and add in funds, or you wanted to add it to any inquiry screen or any report across the system, you can easily do that. And another area you could maybe specify that, and I spoke to someone recently who was wanting to add this as part of their GL. So if we go to a chart of accounts, again, you can just use a search bar, and if I could type that would help, but I would pop into our chart of accounts, you can see here we've got a different PL, our balance sheet, we can start to branch this out as far as we need. But if we wanted to set up um, a chart of accounts and add in fund as an attribute, for example, we could add that as a rule uh, using a chart of account rules that I touched on before to make it um, to make it be um, mandatory for people to specify the fund or specify a project that's going to be a part of at, in the beginning. So as well as a chart of accounts, and again, we can we can split this out however we need. 
we can also set up chart account rules, which would specify that we maybe want to add a fund or we want to have a project. So we can set this up all in the beginning using a listen. Probably one of the final areas, just looking at the time I'd want to maybe touch on is, and one that's came up a lot when we've been speaking to the charities and not-for-profit organisations in the past, is doing public expenses um, and employee expenses. So that's all all available through um, through iPlacent. So you can see here, if I come to this My tab, which is a really nice one for something that you need to do, and really good for budget holders and authorisers to be able to do their authorisations, or pop in expenses, timesheets. Now, the great thing about this area of the system is this can all be done through the iPlus app, as I said. So if you're about on, on the go, especially if you're uh, maybe out and about seeing um, charities or events or um, having to drive somewhere and you want to put your expenses in, then you can easily do that. So if I pop into expenses, I've got a couple that are in here already. I wanted to create a new one. You can see different types of expense. So again, we've got these different document types. I'm just going to pop in and put a personal expense in today. And I can start to see I've got different products that are set up for expenses. You can all be kind of pre-configured. So I'll just put it in that. a general expense. So it's a webinar expense. It's a pay to do this this morning. And then I can pop that through and you can see how much it can be spent on it. £50. And I can submit that through. And again, that will go through our implicit workflow to be able to then be um, authorised by whoever you want the authoriser to be. And again, the good thing about this is it can go through your mobile app for iPlicit, or it can be done through here through the front end. And as as that goes through the authorisation process, that would then go to whoever has to, has to pick up. So we've always got ways to do these authorisation workflows through the system. And again, that's not just for purchases. We've now seen it on the expenses side, and we've also got it on that budget side as well. So that's probably all that we've probably got time for today. Um, as I say, if there are any questions at all, as is normally the case when you watch webinars, certainly when I watch any kind of similar webinars, there may be questions you have after the event. Um, so you might come up um, later in the day. If you do have any questions or anything, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Um, either give me a wee phone on the number below um, or just reach out to the email address below as well and we are more than happy to pick up any queries you might have after the event. Uh, once again, many thanks for, for joining us this morning. Um, much appreciated for your time and if you get any questions, please do let us know.